All right. Hello again, everybody, and, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Kingdom of the Kale Isles. Yes, this is uh, m my uh, custom d, &D game uh, set in my own bizarre world that uh, my broken brain came up with uh and uh now i'm hitting my windscreen uh and um stop hitting that and uh you you may notice that uh fade has a a distinctly more owlbearish appearance <laughs> um uh he will be joining us uh he's he's running uh s slightly late tonight uh so uh he uh, uh he'll he'll kind of jump in and then i'll have to shuffle s some names around and stuff um but roll 20s uh video chat is not broken yet and now that i've said that uh everything will break for now um so yeah uh anyway um i guess let's uh return to uh the world of the kale isles um to kind of uh rehash what's been going on uh these guys uh have been transported to uh the the feywild and uh don't c currently have a way to get back to the prime material plane uh but they found out that the feywild and the elemental planes of existence are each their own um kingdom with the Feywild uh uh being the Verdant Empire, which is ruled over by the Eternal Empress, is the current ruler of it. And uh it is currently at war with the f four elemental kingdoms. Um so uh uh, after they found this out and they, they met the Empress, they uh, got a little bit more information about uh, Fade and, and, and kind of what his role is in, in, in some of the stuff that's going on. And we're able to, to meet the, the coolest shopkeeper ever um, and uh, signed up for a tournament to kind of... Uh, 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 relax and, 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 um, uh, decompress. And during the tournament, uh, Kata was, um, uh, I've, I've lost Avok. Yeah, I do Cool. So yeah, like I said, as soon as I mentioned something. Yeah, I haven't lost me. Yeah, I haven't lost me. Oh, oh okay. good. <laughs> Sorry. That's, yeah. that's fine. Um, Anyway, Kata was attacked by what seemed to be a lynch. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, d defeated it with s some help and then went and uh, 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 had dinner with uh, the Eternal Empress and uh, the Prince Consort. Uh, and while they were there, they were able to find out that there was a traitor uh, amongst the uh uh staff of the the palace and they're able to um defeat that uh and uh we're we're taken somewhere secretive by a a new friend it seems uh or at least someone that's not actively trying to kill them uh an Aladrin named Aether uh and uh he teleported them to a uh, uh, a uh, temple to the dark lady uh, or um, uh, and um, and uh, uh, yeah and, and was about to um explain what was going on so um that's that's where we are right now 
Um, so you, you guys are in this uh, underground temple, as my computer does strange things. Uh, wrong place, computer. Put you open there. Much better. Sorry, I t talk to myself. It keeps me insane. It's fine. Get some mood music. Uh, so yeah, you guys uh, are are uh, in this uh, relatively small-ish uh, temple, but you don't see uh, uh, an, an entrance or, or an exit to it. Um, you can see kind of an, an archway where it looks like a, a door would have been, but it's just a wall. And uh, in this this temple, rough, roughly about like thirty by thirty, uh, uh, you can see that there is an altar to to uh, the Dark Lady that looks. You you guys have have seen altars to the Dark Lady um, in various places, and they generally tend to look just barely kept enough to avoid pissing off the dark lady um, to be honest like not a, a whole lot of people want to be the ones that are cleaning up the altar to the goddess of death um, this one however there um, there's incense lit there are are ceremonial um, lamps on either side that um, are, are currently burning uh, and and burn uh, a, a, a deep kind of indigo flame compared to the regular orange flame that you're used to seeing. And uh, Willow, you noticed quite quickly, this is not a, a magical effect. It's it's simply um, an additive to whatever they use uh, for the wax to make the uh, flames burn a different color. Um, but you're, you're not used to seeing... Uh, and I'm going to turn this down just a little bit it's a little bit loud for me Hi. there we go all right so um yeah you're, you're not used to seeing uh temples really mess that much with like chemical type stuff like they they generally just use normal wax candles or, or oil lamps or things like that. Um, so this is something that, that kind of intrigues you. And uh, while, while you're all kind of getting uh, your bearings, the, the Eternal Empress and uh, the Prince Consort are uh, a, a little bit confused and you can see like the Prince Consort's hand has not left the hilt of his sword um, since you guys have been teleported down here. Um, and uh, Aether uh, turns uh, to all goes, so you're probably wondering what in the hell I'm talking about, aren't you? <laughs> as he takes a drink. <laughs> well, as I said before, this is so much more than simply a, a squabble over territory or, or even something that, that affects multiple planes of existence. This is quite literally reality changing conflict that started well, before the Verd Empire existed. Um, I know you four are aware of 
the chosen wars and the the impact it had on the prime material plane and existence itself and that's what most of the followers of the dark lady that are devoted enough to learn of the secret history that's what they think ended the chosen wars was when all the chosen were slain and the world st started its way back to equilibrium with the chosen or two popping up every so often to muck up the world well what if I was to tell you that the chosen war never ended that it's been going constantly for tens of thousands of years and that you are simply the latest in its casualties. Mm. And what, what people think the Chosen War was about is not entirely the truth. Yes, there was a, a conflict between the gods whether they should directly influence the, the lives of their followers and, and change and, and chart history as they see fit or whether they should s simply adhere to their divine domains and allow humanity and all of the races to choose their own destinies. That had something to do with the war, but the real reason for the Chosen is slightly more groundbreaking. See, when the world began, there were no gods. When the first intelligent creatures started appearing on the prime material plane, on the various planes of existence, the gods were formless. They were chaotic. They had no purpose. They had no definition. They were simply cosmic, pure, untempered cosmic power. But as the intelligent races began to grow and began to see the world there was a necessity for order. And as the intelligent races searched and prayed for order and rules so that the world would work better, the giant cosmic untempered power of the gods began to manifest itself. And the gods themselves were quite literally creations of their worshippers. Every time a, a new aspect of the world was shown to need governing, the prayers and hopes and beliefs of the peoples of the world would manifest as a deity whose sole purpose 
was to govern that. The earliest of which was simply the act of the sun rising and setting every day. The guiding beacon ensured that the sun would always be there to give life and energy to the world. And then people started to die. And there was nowhere for their spirits to go. There was no purpose to it. And so the Dark Lady came to guide their souls through death to the afterlife. And as more and more things happened, nature started appearing and there needed to be rules and, and laws to govern how plants would grow and how they would thrive. And, and then disease and, and, and wounds were starting to become a problem. And so there needed to be a way to harness the very energy that was used to create life. And there needed to be rules to govern how that worked. And finally, there needed to be rules for how the intelligent races interacted with the weave and were able to conjure magic, used to change the reality that they had spent so long trying to define and make rules. Every time something new needed rules and laws, the thoughts and prayers and hopes of the peoples of this world would manifest as a god. And then the chosen wars happened. And that stopped. There has not been the birth of a new god in tens of thousands of years. Despite the world continuing to grow and change, and despite new aspects of the world needing order and law, the chosen war changed how existence works. Why? Well, we don't know the will of the gods. There are very few of us who know this secret history of the Chosen War. And depending on who you worship, you'll get different stories. Then why should we trust yours? You follow one who follows the same guidance I do. But he hasn't told me it. You have. Why should I trust you? It's entirely up to you. To be perfectly honest, I don't actually care if you trust me, or if you believe me, or really anything. Because you're not the chosen. Great, because I just don't give a shit right now. Well, what I've been led to believe through my own communion with the Dark Lady and what I've been told, the Guiding Beacon being the first was uncontested when he formed. And as each new deity appeared, his power became less and less. And eventually, he decided he didn't want to lose any more power. And convinced almost half of the gods that it was no longer prudent to allow the intelligent races 
to control their own destiny. They could not be trusted. They waged wars. They murdered and, and killed. They committed horrible acts against each other for greed, for lust, for vengeance. They could not be trusted to govern and, and guide themselves. No. The gods, with their boundless wisdom, should be the ones to guide history. The dark lady, on the other hand, did not feel this was right, did not feel this was the place of the gods. They were created to serve a purpose, and the powers that they wield are meant to uphold the laws of creation, not to decide the fate of everyone in creation. And that's where the conflict started and continues to this day. Now, if you ask a devotee of, of the guiding beacon who understands and, and knows of the chosen war, they will tell you that humanity was becoming unstable. They were attempting to usurp the, the gods, were, were trying to rise up and become as powerful as them so they could kill the gods and take their places. And the chosen were a necessary evil to prevent the world from ending. And you guys can, can feel kind of the weight of his words all the more kind of reinforced by the place that you're in. And you can see the Eternal Empress and, and the Prince Consort have grown a little bit more pale, which is interesting because they're already relatively fair-skinned. And so they're now looking almost ghost-like. And you can see this look of worry on their face. <sighs> so much bullshit all because some ancient white girl damn well lose a little power. Well, that's the gods for you. Nah, that's just a petty douchebag. I never said the gods were not petty. Uh, whatever, I don't give much a hoot about the hell. Just what the fuck are we doing now? Well, that's the thing. For, what, five, six hundred years now? We've been cut off from the gods. They reside in Elysium and Tartarus. And yet, when you broke through the barrier, when you came here <laughs> something changed that gauntlet you wear cleric has changed the equation as much as the barrier between our planes and the prime material plane has become stronger even more impenetrable than it was before it has done that simply because there is a hole, a tiny pinprick of a hole that is being kept open by your connection to the Dark Lady. And Fade is unnaturally silent as he contemplates everything and hopefully gets here soon. Um, yes, you, did, little one. Uh, would they 
happy after us because of something uh, because of over here something one of us says or just by luck to be honest I sincerely doubt the assassins after you understand why it is they're trying to kill you mm. I have no doubt they have been told it is important to the war efforts that without their, uh, without your death, that their country will be taken over by someone or something, their way of life will be destroyed. It's the same thing every time. But uh, there is someone on this plane of existence who is pulling the strings of this entire war. This war has never been about the elemental kingdoms trying to take over. This war has been specifically to prevent those of us who know the true history of this world from being able to stop whatever plans are being made on the other planes. Whoa, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of like what, what was going on in Material Plane. And as you uh, guys are speaking, you finally see the Eternal Empress turn and go, are you trying to say that I'm some sort of pawn in someone else's game? I take great offense at the very idea. Listen, Your Highness, it doesn't really matter how you feel about this. This is what's happening. Have you ever wondered why it is every time peace be becomes an option? Every time there is an assassination attempt? or a coup, or an ambush, or something. How many times has the table of peace been broken and destroyed by the spilling of blood? In my lifetime, I've seen it happen, what, 12 times now? In the last 600 years? 12 times. Either your gods are the most inept gods in the history of existence, or something else is going on here. And you see her fall silent again. Obviously up upset, but a, a little bit overwhelmed to the, the point of speechlessness. <sighs> so how do we find them? I don't actually know the answer to that. I've been searching for a good 300 years. I've gotten close a few times. It's one of the benefits uh, of being an assassin for hire is... People's last words generally tend to be very informative. And uh, the connections that I've made um, tend to trust me remarkably well, mostly because those people that don't trust me generally don't live long enough to tell anyone why they don't trust me. Right, You're in that let's... she uh, kind of turns to uh, Willow. Uh, uh, how you doing? You got hit pretty bad. Out of character, you got hit pretty bad by those fireballs. Oh, yeah. I yeah, know. Willow's <laughs> kind of just like, 
been clutching her side for most of this, trying to focus on it, but also very much in pain. Alarmed, I go over to her and cast heal. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's, oh, that's the crazy high, like, yeah. 60 hit point thing, right? Delightful. That's probably your highest spell slot right now. Yeah, that's a sex level spell. Mm. Well, it's not like you guys are really in danger right now. Like, you can see all of the entrances to the room you're in. <laughs> All zero of them. So unless someone teleports in, you're pretty good. Mm. Anyways, what was I trying to say? Oh, right. <sighs> so I was starting to trust where they got any leads, at least. Well, again, I've been doing this for a few hundred years and have gotten next to nowhere. And now that we have him, any points to fade. Perhaps we no longer need to worry about who it is that's pulling the strings here. And the Prince Consort speaks up. Now, that doesn't make much sense at all. If there's someone that is influencing five kingdoms, then we should stop them. No, no, you're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Fade, the reason all of this is happening is to stop Fade from doing exactly what he wants to do. Turn to the Prime Material Plane. Speak with the Dark Lady. And fix what has been broken for eons. I say we stop trying to... Find this elusive puppet master yeah, and going. just focus on getting Fade exactly where he wants to go. The puppet master will come to us. There it is. No, I'm not talking about using your friend as bait. Again, I spent hundreds of years searching for this man or woman or whatever. They are not, they're not in a place where they could easily get here. What I'm saying is, if we can return you to the prime material plane, this puppet master will follow you. And there is but one way to get there. So if we know where he's going to be, we can stop him. Or at least slow him down long enough for you to get done what you need to do. You seem to have some plan on how to get us back to the Primateria Plane that no one else seems to know. Well, I think plan is a bit of a... a bit of a loaded word. More of a... Uh, an idea. Again, the barrier between the prime material plane and the Verdun Empire has been reinforced. Specifically because there's a hole in it. That gauntlet connects Fade to the Dark Lady through the barriers between planes of existence. So all around that hole, it has been reinforced, but that hole is still there. And as long as that hole exists, it is vulnerable. Great. Where the fuck's the hole? Well, I was hoping you all could figure that one out. Again, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm, I'm telling you as, as much as I know, I've, Notice that there's a connection here. We know where the portal is to the prime material plane. Obviously, the hole has to be connected to it somehow. However, I have no divine power. I follow the Dark Lady, but she has not given me her blessing. My abilities are purely 
self-taught and self-controlled. I use my own energy, my own inner power to enact her will. But you Such don't. A Sorry, say that again. Essentially be a glorified messenger. Well, not really. I mean, I'm an assassin. And I'm a damn That's good one. If you'd prefer, I can just let you all go back and get killed. Again, the only one I really need is Fade. Fade doesn't go anywhere without us. I... Yep. Where are we, by the way? Well, we're a few hundred feet underneath the uh, dungeons below uh, the Imperial Palace. Um, and how did you get us here? Well, um, I'm not entirely sure. I have a, uh, and he takes out a small uh, wooden, look, it looks like a carved wooden coin. And as you, you look at it, you can see the symbol of the Dark Lady on it. And he goes, well, and he kind of flips it. This has been passed down to those in my order for generations. And by concentrating on it, it can take whomever is holding it to this location. It is a sacred place and a protected place. No one that the Dark Lady does not allow to survive here will. Even if there were some way for people to find a way in here, they would die instantly if the Dark Lady did not wish them to be here. I have uh, learned to use this better than quite a few of my predecessors, I can bring friends. However, I'm still limited by the idea of the Dark Lady must permit them to exist here. So, very happy the Dark Lady decided that the Empress and Prince Consort deserve to live today. As that would have been a rather awkward thing to explain. But I could tell you exactly how it works. I just know how to use it. No. To be honest, I've never really needed to know. It saved my life a few times. Ended the life of a few people. I can return you to the Imperial Palace whenever you want. But if you want to return here, you will need me. Right. Uh, Mike, where are you? You'll be here eventually. Rule 20 isn't letting him on, it's just airing. Their Twitter says they're having a slowdown on their site. Mike just didn't know what? <laughs> Oh, that that is hilarious. He's watching us on Twitch. Oh. Look at on. So. Uh. Wow. That is hilarious. Mike. That is we don't want you to be a, a owl bear. <laughs> um if if you can hear me. Uh Keep keep trying to get in. Uh, I'm I'm surprised it hasn't screwed up for us. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. So he turns to you. He's like, "So, 
Do any of you have any questions? Are there other chosen out there? Well, the Dark Lady generally doesn't create a chosen unless they're opposing another chosen. So I would assume there's at least one other with what's been happening recently. This feels different than it has in a very, very long time. I think we are on the, we're at the very beginning of a second chosen war, oh, full blown conflict, no longer fought in the shadows with misinformation and lies guiding the hands of the combatants. I think the chosen are going to start showing themselves, start raising armies and start trying to take back the world. Now, there is one tiny part that has never been revealed to me nor anyone I know. And that is in the histories that have been passed down, there are two distinct. types of superhumans, let's say, super creatures. You have the chosen who impart a piece of the gods inside them. And you have another group that has never been fully explained to me. But the Chosen of the Guiding Beacon felt very strongly that they all needed to die before the first Chosen War erupted. So whatever these creatures are, they had something to do with the creation of the gods. They had something to do, something that scared the Guiding Beacon enough that he had them all killed. Do you know anything else about what they are, what they were called? It's never been told to me. I've seen pictures, I've, I've heard descriptions. I've, I've never actually read the, the text that you did. Mm. It's only been, again, images carved into walls, certain temples, very deep below the earth. Images of chosen and, and something else. They seem to be mostly non-violent, which is why the chosen were able to kill them so quickly. And I have to remember if I've actually told you guys the names or not. I'm trying to go through my notes and <laughs> see. Um, if you want to roll me a history check. Twenty two. Um, so you 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 do remember because I, I were were you in the room with, with uh, Fade when he had the whole okay. Yes. So you do re remember seeing the the chosen all had their own color in, in that vision. Right. And mm -hmm. then you had those, those, had those. white and you know that there were a total um, of nine of them. 
Yep, nine glowing figures is all I have written. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that the chosen killed them all. You've now, you've now been 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 informed that the chosen killed them off. Uh, give me a second. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason. Let's see if we can get Mike in here. Um, I'm kind of needing to figure this shit out. Uh, so, so, um, so yeah, you, you know that there were nine of them, um, you have not been, been given the, uh, the name. Okay. No, cause the other, I have, I have two different, uh, campaigns that are running in the same world mm-hmm. at similar times time periods not exactly the same and um uh, i have to figure out which ones i've told what to because the creation myth is the same um (laughs) i think you you have heard the word muses used Mm -hmm. so you do know that's that's what these are called is is the or at least now you you've made made the connection Gotcha. These nine glowy things are the the muses. Cool. Let's see if Mike's gotten back in. Come on, Mike, you can do it. I may uh, I may have to just kick him out of the game so he can just rejoin. But I'm not sure if it'll let me do that because Roll Twenty is acting real weird. Wow, Roll Twenty just like totally sh- shit the bed. Mm, because of course it, they would do that. <sighs> That is impressive. (laughs) Looks like they've added DDoS protection. (sighs) Uh, Apparently it's just not letting them in. I'm going to... For those of you watching at home, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try one more thing, and then uh, worst case scenario, uh, I may uh, just just open up a, a um, uh, Google Plus Hangout uh, okay. just so we can kind of finish finish uh, this. There thing. is the Twitch. Uh, oh yeah, we we only have four, right? Yep. Oh wait. Uh, no, because that's a yeah. So I, I may just just do the Twitch thing, uh, just so a, a, again we can we can we can we can mm, we can do this uh, with Mike. So uh, Mike, if you can hear me, uh, yeah, we're not going to deal with Roll Twenty right now. Uh, op- open up your your Twitch desktop app and. Uh, Uh, yeah, I know. And then I'm just going to really quickly uh, go in a, a slight break for, for just a little bit here, folks. Uh, and we'll hopefully have, have, have Mike on here uh, in just a little bit. So.
we'll be we'll, we'll be uh we'll be right back
we are live again. Hello, everybody. Sorry for all the crazy stuff going on. Uh, yeah, Roll20 shit the bed in the middle of our game, mm. which is uh, interesting because that is the most stable connection I've ever had to Roll20. Mm. It was when the whole website went down. Uh, so, Fade is here. Uh, you'll notice the screen looks rather different than you're used to. I don't have the, the, the time to, to set everything up and make it look all pretty, but uh, here, here we go. Um, so, uh, Fade, you've... Um, hi. Hi, Fade. Uh, so, you've heard him uh, basically tell them uh, that... Uh, Somebody is on the uh, 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 on this these planes of existence, pulling the strings of this war, doing everything they can to keep everyone distracted from being able to uh, reopen the portal to the prime material plane. And he's also mentioned that your gauntlet um, has changed things. Um, a Aether has has been hunting this puppet master for a couple hundred years, has gotten close to him, but has never figured out who he is. He, she, it, whatever. Um, they. So they. Zezer. You know, pick your pronoun. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but now with your gauntlet, uh, the the barrier between the Feywild and the Prime Material Plane has gotten stronger, more indestructible, and that's happened because your gauntlet connects you to the Dark Lady, um, and uh, because of that, there is a hole in the barrier that. Uh, uh, I think, like, can I just, after this whole time that I've kind of been half listening and just praying and mm -hmm. nurturing the connection that, uh, that I, that's his name. Um, yeah. That, uh, that I felt with this gauntlet after I thanked her for helping us. Can I just look at Aether mm -hmm. and and say, can you just watch them for a minute? I have to try something. And then I'm not like in game casting a spell or anything, but from what we've learned about Chosen and what they can do and how they can essentially mess with reality mm -hmm. to a degree, I want to go inwards like I have in the past, like when we, when Kata was infected with the thing, I want to like go inward and ride this thread. I want to follow it back to her and find, find that barrier that I've seen in my vision. I just want to try. Okay. Um, like a thrill project or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or astral project. Uh, go ahead and make me a, a straight, Wisdom roll. Seems nobody's rolled so far in this game. It's a natural one. Natural one. Oh no. Yep. Okay. So focusing on, on the gauntlet and everything, um you're you're having a hard time focusing on anything. The just massive amount of, of information you've gotten um has awoken some feelings in you that you don't quite understand. Um, obviously, having been uh, an acolyte of, of, of the Dark Lady for a, a while now, um, de dealing with acolytes of other, other faith, uh, faiths has always been a, an awkward situation for you. Hmm. Um, but now, when, when you think about specifically the guiding beacon, but, but a couple other ones as well. Like you f feel an anger, a, a hatred that 
you don't know why. Like, it doesn't feel like your anger, your hatred. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, you're, you're just not able to focus right now because you, you're processing these new feelings that don't feel like they're yours. Um, so yeah, uh, as, as, as you guys watch him sit there, um, you see him cause, cause you've seen him kind of commune before. Um, and the, the interactions and, and just everything you know about fade, um, he's always been relatively good at controlling his, him himself and, and his emotions. And, um, you see him get frustrated and start to curse. And, um, he actually knocks over one of the candles at, uh, uh, at the, at, at the end of this, um, which just goes out, um, as it's, it's knocked around and, at fade as, as you come out of your, your meditation, you are seething with, with anger, um, more angry than you've ever been before. Like you adrenaline's running through, like you can, you can hear your pulse in your ears. Um, um, you can feel like your, your muscles are like, you're ready to fight right now. I feel the rage bonus action coming. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you guys want to do? Uh, Aether kind of sees this and, uh, uh, you guys watch him kind of move, in a way that he positions himself between um, Fade and uh, the Empress and, and Prince Consort. And uh, Avok, you're probably the only one would notice him uh, very, uh, uh, very, um, uh, not secretly, subtly, moving into a defensive fighting stance with, with your kind of background in, in combat, you would recognize this. Whereas the other people just kind of watch him sit there and stand a little differently. So are you standing or uh, I was imagining fate like kneeling or sitting in breath. Yeah, when, uh, uh, as of right now, when he, gets out of uh, his meditation he's he's currently on his knees like he normally is when when he meditates um okay. but then, you you can see that he's very angry so with that information mm -hmm. what do you guys want to do he's yeah. he's borderline avoc angry right and i think before anyone gets too close i'm going to gauntlet hand just and just this this anger like i'm not controlling my magic it it like auto casts stone shape and just like the imprint of my glove goes down like 10 feet so they're just straight down when i pull my hand up mm -hmm. and i stand up and just look at aether and do you know how we can get to her we need to find this other hole this other breach, whatever. Well, I need to find it and cut it now. And you, you see him, he's like, um, right, you can calm down. You are among friends. Well, uh, you're among uh, an assassin, uh, uh, a crazy person uh, uh, with an axe, and ooh, a young... Thaumaturgy, <laughs> the eyes start to go. <laughs> and a young woman who can turn into a stone monster, so if you want to call them friends, that's, that's fine. Um, but, uh, we know where the portal is to the prime material plane in the uh, eternal empress speaks up. Yes, it's in the center of the imperial palace on the, on the ground floor. It's been there for generations. It's just been unused f since it was blocked off 600 years ago, but we, the, the portal is still there. It's just not working. Uh, and I look at Aether chimes in and goes, yes. And because we have you we may be able to change that. However, um, 
I sincerely doubt there are many plant um, spies in the palace itself. There are some. You've met and killed one of them already. But there are not going to be many. However, as soon as we start trying to open this, um, the puppet master is going to know that all his efforts are going to be for naught if we get you back to the prime material plane. So he will send everything he has against you, including possibly himself. Now, if we do this fast enough, you will be long gone before he gets anywhere near uh, a land will. But I doubt the entire forces of the Eternal Empress could stop him. So he will be after you, and he will eventually get there where... Our attempt will be will be to slow him down and weaken him enough so that when he does meet you, you can end him. Almost in third person, I kind of like stand even taller and our family, I use the word our, our family glance at these people behind me, my friends, the only people that I know that will be there for me. We'll, we need our support, Empress. And like, I'm like teeth grinding first time, not showing her much respect. I'm just like, you need to help us. If you want, if you want this puppet, I do, please just Get us as much as you can in the next day, and we need to get to this portal. We need to recover from that thing. Well, but it, it, if I have to go inward, and I reach my hand out and try to grab Willow's hand, and she's going to help. She knows as much as I do. And then I look at this this little druid who I've seen in very recently just turned into a monster. And then I look at the hulking <laughs> barbarian carrying a literal weapon of death with the holy symbol of the dark lady. They're going to protect us, but we're going to do the work. Please support them. And then I start to calm down a little bit okay. and really release my grip. Yeah, and, and at this point you're, you're coming to terms the the thing that that overwhelmed you was the fact that these emotions came out of nowhere now, for sure like i i as as they go, go away i like i totally know it's not my anger i know who or i have an idea of who it's coming from and it's just like she needs this done this is all i can do there's no other focus for me right now so as you say that um the prince consort speaks up he's like you will you will have the entirety of our armies between this fiend and you. If what this assassin says is true, then the way to peace, the way to healing our land and the elemental kingdoms is by getting you back to the prime material plane. My men, my troops, will give their lives for peace. If we make it through this, it will not be forgotten. I won't leave you here. We won't leave you here. And when I say we, I put my hand to my holy symbol. Well, f first we should... Uh, uh, and then Aether kind of picks up. Well, first we should probably figure out how we're going to do this. Because as much as I know, that gauntlet and you are part of the equation, I don't really know the rest of it. Again, I've been on my own for a few hundred years. Um, and remarkably enough, when you're cut off from your source of information... Uh, it's remarkably difficult to find new information. So, yes, 
Do you have a theory as to how we're going to be able to break through this barrier? Holy crap. So Mike has an idea. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Um, Fade looks at Aether. Do you think there's anything you're going to be able to do while we attempt this? Is information more important to you than being next to us when when things start to happen? Oh, I don't really plan on being next to you. I plan on being somewhere hidden, watching, waiting for the exact right moment for my particular skill set to be useful. I can stand next to you as long as you like, but I have no divine power. Uh, that was... Zoldan may have power. <coughs> Sorry. Um, my gift has, has never been my faith. It has been my skill and my commitment to perfecting my abilities. I sincerely doubt the ability to kill someone uh, without being seen is going to help you cross an interplanar barrier. I had to. I'm sorry. So if you'd like me to stand there, I can. I feel I will be significantly less useful. My plan was to wait outside the palace and watch. I've been hunting this creature for hundreds of years. If I see him, I will know him. Or her, or it, whatever. And I may be able to slow them down enough and weaken them enough so that when you do have a confrontation with them, that you will be able to be victorious with your allies. I must impress this on you. The final message I got before the prime material plane and thus the dark lady was cut off from me was that you cannot do this alone. You are not powerful enough. This chosen here this puppet master, they have been growing their power, learning to control it for thousands of years. Yikes. You, in comparison, are very new, very young. Rely on your allies here. They are not... I don't believe they're here lightly. As much as I don't personally need them, I think you do. Crypt Titans. Well, it looks like we have some catching up to do. Lovely. Anyone want some wine? If Avok doesn't grab it, I do. <laughs> oh, there's no wine. He 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 he, he looks at the empress. It's like it's kind of your thing. I mean, I kill people. I don't really make wine, but you have the wealth of a nation. I would assume some of that wealth comes with alcohol. And the eternal empress, you you've seen her kind of visage broken for the first time since you've met her like she's always had this this calm uh fa facade that's you guys have never s seen behind her mask until now um so um now you you see the mask come back up she becomes more poised she's like certainly um if you can return us to the imperial palace i can ensure that uh, we are all well fed and drunk um, I would say um, I don't believe it is in any of your best interest to return to your inn um, 
I will have quarters prepared for you in the Imperial Palace. Um, they will be... Your exact location will be known only to the Prince Consort, myself, and our most trusted guards. No one else will know where in the palace you reside. The mere fact that we have uncovered as, as much as we have is not unknown to other people. The confrontation with the spy, many people saw that. The confrontation with the lich, many people have seen that. The puppet master, as you call him, more likely than not, is probably aware that their plans are beginning to unravel. So I don't believe it's safe for you to leave the Imperial Palace until we send you to the Prime Material Plane. Does this... Uh, are you okay with these arrangements? I look at Cotton Avok. It's not always smart to cage an animal, but for right now, <laughs> I would not consider this a cage. I mean, these will be very, very nice rooms. Fine, a gilded cage. And hopefully, you will only be there long enough for us to develop a plan and to get you back. This is my mission. I I won't even ask these amazing people with me. But I have a feeling they're gonna they're gonna be see this through. Mm. So I know that I'm in. You don't have to ask. <laughs> Uh, I've been with you since the beginning of this shit show, so yeah, I might as well continue with the shitting. Lovely. <laughs> there's, a, there's a poet hiding inside you. Well, then, uh, I guess it's time for us to leave this place before the shitting begins. Because I don't particularly feel like cleaning that up. If you would all uh, step closer to me. I broke my... <laughs> and you all gather around, you feel that familiar feeling. Oh, no, that was the DM. Oh. oh, wow. You, you broke the DM, David. Take uh, take inspiration. Oh. Yes. <laughs> By the way, Mike used to have inspiration from last time. Oh. That was... My, 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 my one thought there was, you feel the familiar feeling... Warmth by your cheeks. <laughs> anyway, so you guys, I'm not going to describe it. You guys teleport. <laughs> um, you, you're back in the Imperial Palace. Um, the uh, Eternal Empress very quickly as as the guards in the room see you appear in this kind of cloud of darkness and they immediately level their glaives at you, see the Eternal Empress there, back up and she um, uh, the, the Prince card sort turns to them and go prepare the Imperial Palace for siege the enemy will be here soon recall all troops to a land will fortify the Imperial Palace and the city itself as much as you can. Now! And 
they kind of oh and they they run off and then the um uh uh empress uh turns to you and goes uh this will be much smoother than the last one and you see her encant in, in some words and you see a, a teleportation circle start to form along the ground and you guys are teleported um to a, another part of the palace that as you guys get there you notice uh looks like there hasn't been a ton of traffic in this area for a while you're you're in a um kind of antechamber you can see a, a hallway to uh the north uh and a, a set of big double doors uh to uh the south and there's there's uh kind of lounge ish furniture in here there's some tables there's some some chairs and, and things like that uh the uh empress goes there are chambers down there for each of you um Aether, I was not sure if you'd be joining us, but there is a chamber for you if you desire it. Um, we are in a part of the palace that can only be reached through magical means. There are no direct doorways that connect to this part of the palace. So hopefully you will be safe here. There are anti scrying spells, and the only one that can teleport in here is me and those that I bring. So, we will have food for you um, tomorrow morning, teleported in. I have to return to my throne room, address uh, the War Council, tell them what is going on, and find out if we have any spies in the War Council. My love, uh, I will need you. I will see you all tomorrow morning. Rest. I fear tomorrow will not be an enjoyable day for anyone. And she and the prince consort teleport away. So what are you guys going to do? Willow realizes that she hasn't let go of Fade's hand yet, and looks and doesn't know if she should. And that's all she's doing at the moment. With a passive of 15, would I have noticed that? Uh, she doesn't... I mean, they're not hiding it. Honey? <laughs> It's it's one of those things that I don't, I don't think either one of them is is consciously a hundred percent aware of it until they realize that, that they haven't taken. <laughs> so yeah, because they're not really consciously aware of it, no one's trying to hide anything. All right. Anyway, it's if I just listen. Ha! Knew it. <laughs> Looks down. I love, I love the, the fact that when when the... things happen. <laughs> Katie just goes <laughs> like a cat or a dog. Going. Yeah. Oh. I would like I have to rage. See, you say that just, <laughs> but um, is the, did the concert leave? Yeah, uh, uh, you guys are, are, are alone yeah. in here. Well, with Aether, correct? Uh, yeah, still Aether. Aether's still there. Gotcha. Uh, or, or actually, um, make a per per perception check. Okay. Fourteen. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah. We got the same thing. Uh, <sighs> you guys have no idea where he is, nor do no. I think you you could, because I just rolled a nat twenty. Ah. Uh, yeah, he's just he's, he's gone. Yes. I don't think I. Tried. I'm injured in there. 
bright orange jumpsuits. Yes, bright orange ninjas. <laughs> They're all run like this. You're welcome, Nigel Vince. I'll explain it to you later, Victoria. <laughs> Not at all. Um, so, anything else you guys want to do? Uh, it's uh, again, you have dinner uh, here, and and you were. Uh, well, be- between the fight and 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 going down to the the the, the hidden temple, um, it's uh, it's it's definitely like late evening, probably like ten, eleven at night at this point. So, mm. Faith's got his emotional crap going on, as usual. Um, <laughs> feeling someone else's anger coursing through his veins. Um, he's, he's been empathetic before, but this is a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of look at Avok. Are you, are you angry all the time? Hmm. That's his secret. Sorry, uh, I, I had to make the reference. I know it. I know. I don't think doing it. Um, uh, more irritated, but that's life. Anywho, yeah, my suggestion to you is just punch something. I kind of smirk and I punch Avok. <laughs> you have to roll. Well, rolling an eight's probably not going to go well for me here. It'd be uh, plus your uh, just your strength mod because yep. you're not proficient in unarmed strikes. Or oh, no, I have, proficient but, in but unarmed. I have a magical gauntlet on that I'm trying to hit him with. It's a fifteen. I don't hit him. He probably uh, catches my hand. Yeah, Avok, you see, you see the the punch coming towards you. Just kidding. <laughs> Work on your punching. The power for your punch comes from your hips. All right. <clears throat> so. The fuck are we doing? Go to bed. I guess tomorrow. We'll figure it out tomorrow. But (sighs) so you all just gonna yeah. You all head off to your rooms. You, uh, remarkably enough, find your names emblazoned on the doors, like carved into <laughs> the metal doors, in, like in Boston. This fucking place. This fucking place. Enough magic, you can get some pretty cool stuff. Oh. Um, and yeah, each, each one of your rooms is uh, immaculate. Four-post, king-size bed, um, Wash basin, you know, ensuite bathroom, the the the, the works. Um, on the way, well, whatever. That's a. On the way, or I'm gonna walk around quickly, and I'm gonna find a plant or a flower or something. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna find. It's an empty book, and like a. And then right before bed, I'm going to set my holy symbol in the middle of those two things and just kind of stare at them and think for a while. Okay. Any particular goal in this staring yeah. contest with an inanimate object? Sure. He looks to the left and thinks about Willow. Then he looks 
at the holy symbol and thinks of himself and then he looks to the plant and thinks about kata and so what decides, you're saying is that you just don't want to think about avok fate is <laughs> uh fate is looking for the next step in his training and what he should focus on makes sense so uh yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll deal with that uh next time so um thank you to everyone uh uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube or you, uh, uh, um, or you, um, uh, uh, watching live, whatever, uh, thanks for, for, for dealing with our, our, um, uh, te technical difficulties, um, couldn't be avoided, roll 20 shit the bed. Um, if you are, uh, 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 American, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, uh, hope you get to spend it with, uh, mm -hmm. loved ones and eat far too much uh, food as is the American way. Um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> on a personal note, um, as someone who worked in retail for many years, um, and worked black Friday every year I was in retail, uh, be kind to, uh, uh the retail employees. They uh, are just as upset that they're out of, the expensive items as you are. Trust They're me. They're just this. doing your job. Do Cyber Monday instead. Uh, so yes, be be kind uh, if you can. Uh, you know, uh, leave extra tips for uh, any uh, service industry people that you deal with because the Black Friday crowds are really rough on everyone from retail to food service to everybody it is a it is a rough day to work so be kind to them uh and uh yes have a happy thanksgiving uh and and we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks right bye bye, bye. bye.